back in this bitch, uh Know we full attack in this shit, uh You know the full Mac came equipped, uh Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the 8 Morning 92 Podcast, where we always keep it 100. I'm your man, Harrison, and I'm back, back, back like I never left. And we can just go ahead and cut it to it. Um, I have a guest with me today, so I am not really going to go too much into it because we were talking for about 45 minutes. So um, I'm really just opening it up with my um, What Did James Learn From This Week episode, um, or portion of the show. Uh, this week I was in taps for some people that seen, uh, it's basically a transitioning out to civilian world, uh, for the military. I know I put on my, uh, Instagram that, and Snapchat that I was just saying goodbye to the military. I was already signed up for the class. It was basically a precautionary just in case I didn't pick up rank. And I was a higher tenure out of the military. I haven't really decided yet if I'm done with the military or not, so I was already signed up for the class, and because of kind of some of the frustration that happened at work, I had just decided to stay in the class because I was already signed up for it. So that was why I um, was in the TAPS class this week. For anybody that saw my Instagram story and my Snapchat story and saw me in the TAPS transition class, I was already signed up for it months ago before I even got promoted. So sorry for the wool on the wall, pulling the wool over your eyes people that's kind of why i was in there but um as far as with my you know what i kind of learned from this week um i've been doing some thinking of you know uh we talked last week when zay was on here started eighth grade man i feel so old when he said that not even 35 but he's about to be in high school and that's just so weird when you see your little one going to high school like i used to I have videos of him rolling and everything, and I feel like, what the hell am I doing as this freaking 20, 18, 19 year old, this one year old, two year old, 20 year old uh, man with this infant? What am I doing? Now he's 13, 14 years old, and I'm just in my 30s, early 30s, and he's about to be grown, and it's just so weird, like how time flies. Um,. But um, I say that, and as I come through, um, as we had the episode, we were just talking about competitors I don't like to lose. I did some reflecting just on some things that I will say that I do need to work on. I was just learning, like, you know, when to walk away from stuff. Uh, I had this tendency of trying to, I get myself in arguments, I get myself in the fights or anything to where... I look like I'm arguing, I look like I'm trying to talk something down or talk somebody into something, and it's, it looks like I just have to win, or I just have to get the last word or whatever, and I've noticed that I can't walk away from something until it's resolved, because if I walk away from something, it's not that I didn't win, it's I quit, and I I've always been told not to quit anything. So I, if I quit, what does that make me a quitter? And I tell anybody, don't you ever quit. You give it your all. So I'll stay in situations or relationships. I'll stay in friendships. I'll stay in whatever because, and I'll be in things that can become toxic way longer than necessary because in my mind, if I don't do whatever it takes, I quit on it. And I got into an argument a couple of days ago, three, four, five days ago, when in reality it turned into an argument because I'm talking and I'm just trying to get to a point to where me and a person can just see eye to eye. And because I can't just walk away, I need us to see eye to eye because if I just walk away, that means I quit. I just gave up. I didn't put everything I could into it. You know, it escalates into so much more. And I notice that is my problem. Um, you put yourself in these situations to where you don't know when to stop. And you are 
putting yourself in harm's way because when do you pull the plug and you have put such a bad stigma on something called quitting that you ready to die for this you ready to put yourself like what does it lead to jail it just doesn't matter because you just don't do what's best for everybody involved because your mindset will drive you crazy if you don't do it that way and that's kind of like trying to control everything when in your mind you think that it's not giving your all but it's control it's power and to an extent i gotta tell myself that you can't control everything whether your intention is good or whether it's not whether you're looking at it as like you give it your all you can't control everything so you know <clears throat> my learning block is to just learn to that's any argument he's whatever just okay walk away just take my if it's not going if i okay you're not quitting you're not giving up okay because sitting there trying to make someone see the page or whatever you 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 james harrison wants it to go can get it to a road to where it can affect you and everybody else and you're going to sit there and you're going to ask yourself now you got it was it worth it <clears throat> and then you're going to be sitting there like thanos talking to a baby gamora and he'll ask you what did it cost you it cost you everything so you know the hardest thing to do is to tell myself i'm not quitting i'm preserving my sanity, my life, everything just by walking away because live the fight another day. And that's just something I just really had to work on and really just look at it a whole different way. So I've just been kind of just telling myself, like, stop thinking you quitting by walking away and thinking of seeing another day. So um, that was just kind of like my, where do I stand? What did I learn? What did I think of for like this week? And I just wanted to make sure that I, uh, sat there and shared that before i started with the interview so we got a dope interview coming up with feel the blurred explorer as you'll see like i said this wasn't gonna be too long because we already did the interview and it was already 45 minutes so y'all sit back here's the interview coming up what's up everybody welcome back to another episode of the eight morning 92 podcast where we always keep it 100 i'm your host harrison and today i am joined by today we got feel the blurred explorer with us on the eight morning 92 podcast he is here today to uh, basically give us his intake on what it's like to be a person of melanin pigmentation going out to these countries. Uh, so appreciate you joining us. Welcome to the 8192 Podcast. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, man. Thank you for having me. Uh, appreciate you joining us. Uh, like I said, this has been <clears throat> something that I know you reached out to me a couple months ago. Actually, yeah, yeah. more than a couple months ago. Um, I know I was uh, kind of out at sea and stuff, and there was a little complication just because you're in um, South Korea right now. But right. I'm glad you were finally able to come on the show and we were able to get our times uh, coordinated. I know you're on vacation now. So how's everything out there right now? Uh, everything's going good right now. Um, case at the time of reporting right now, South Korea, particularly Seoul, has been hit with a massive uh, monsoon season. So they're having a major flooding problem in Seoul, which is crazy. Like, um, Basically, like the tr some of the train stations, uh, they got flooded. A lot of businesses, homes, they got flooded because most of the some of the business, like gyms, for example, they kind of get in the basement levels. That got flooded. Something like a pretty war has tons of water damage. Oh, any uh, damage to any of your property? No, I don't live in Seoul, so I, I'm pretty much far away. Like I'm on the east coast, like gotcha. literally on the coastline. Oh, okay, I was looking at. I didn't know if you lived in north northern part of the South Korea. Um, I know. I think it's called. Is it called Incheon? Incheon, Incheon. Oh, okay. Uh, no, I used to live there back in 2020, but I lived, I left um back in 2021 after my contract ended. Gotcha. Okay. And um, so are you still doing a ESL teacher? Yes, sir. That's what I'm still doing. I'm currently in my uh, job right now. Been here for about now two years. Oh, Going okay. on two years. So I guess before we kind of go into the book, I just want to know, you know, with uh, everything that's kind of going on in the country, right? Well, mm -hmm. in our country, in America right now, you know, we're seeing an increase in monkeypox. I want to know, is it yeah. kind of happening out that way with you all as well? Uh, we are. I, we've had some cases of monkeypox. Um, 
but it's not as serious as these levels. And also, uh, of course, COVID level numbers are start somewhat climbing up too, but it's not as uh, where people are panicking as before. Like even I, even after the two years, like I got COVID back in back in April, but I was already vax, triple vax already, so I was good to go. So I had no problems. Um, I was about to ask that as well. How has it been? Um, because I know you started the the initial reason for you kind of doing yeah. the traveler's guide was yeah. to help people maneuver through COVID through travel during COVID times. Yeah. How has it been since kind of the rules and regulations have been lifted, or are they still kind of strict? Because in America yeah. they're kind of lax. So are they still as strict as they were there? Um, especially uh, since the numbers are spiking? Yeah, it's been um sort of relaxing. So back in May of this year, 2022, um, the Korean government, right as the holiday started, uh, like Children's Day Blues birthday weekend started, uh, the Korean government pretty much said, okay, when you're outdoors, you don't have to wear a mask outdoors if you don't want to. Of course, you still have to wear one where you're inside, right? And um, during, it was crazy, during like the past two years, 2020, 2021, uh, the Korean government said, okay, we're shutting down all bars, clubs, gyms, Restaurants, you got shut down temporarily, right? And unfortunately, so many businesses went out because um, there's barely any financial, you know, help because a lot of people that's how the, that was a livelihood, you know. So it, it was crazy. Um, during that period, so during that period, what was it like during the COVID period in Korea, South Korea, during that whole time? Was it as bad as it looked from our standpoint over here? Uh. From your standpoint, it was a little bit more tame. I mean, it has its crazy moments, that's for sure. Because, um, funny enough, uh, back in, I was in March, yeah, uh, where as a high pandemic, like Daegu was the epicenter of COVID nineteen. Like Daegu was the the spot at the time. Then eventually, ground came up to Seoul and whatnot. And uh, and funny enough, I actually switched to working at elementary school in Incheon right as the pandemic hit. And the craziest thing is, like, the whole time I had working a contract there, I never taught a single student the whole year, not even online teaching. So basically, I got paid to sit around and do nothing. And then around uh, summer 2020, that's when I got pretty much, I guess you say, put on leave. So I got stuck at home on a reduced salary. And that was a struggle because, uh, one, I wasn't working. Two, uh, I was living in a very expensive area, too. So uh, what I did like the area living in is just, like, with a reduced salary like that, it was kind of hard to like try to survive, you know, pay bills on top like that. Gotcha. I understand. So let's dive in the kind of who Phil is, right? So where are yeah. you from? Uh, from South Carolina. Oh, okay. Uh, what part? Uh, I live in uh, Blythewood. Oh, okay. Where exactly? What's that by? It's uh, right pretty much on the border of the capital of Columbia. Oh, okay. Like, you so pass I noticed... it on I-77. Uh, say it again. You pass it on I seventy seven. Like you're going whether you go north or south of South Carolina, you pass it. You pass this. You pass this town. Oh, okay. So, um, you're not that far from me right now. Right now, I'm currently in Virginia, so we're kind of close. I actually got Brandon Virginia right now. He works at um Virginia Tech right now, actually. Oh, really? Oh, okay. So yeah, yeah. If you ever, if you uh, my friend Jamal, like, he actually worked. He's like, I guess the director, like um, uh. He basically he's the camera guy. He's in charge of the camera for all the sports teams for the sports team. He's a, he's a camera guy. Oh, okay. Well, when you talk to him, tell him to yeah. tell him to look out for the eight one nine two podcast. Tell him, you know, we <laughs> sports fans. Tell him we talk about sports all the time. We've even yeah, had yeah. sports college uh, professional athletes on the show. So tell him to look out. Yeah, for yeah, he is, yeah, he's down there taking pictures of the football guys, recording. He does basically all the video stuff for them, video editing. Okay. So, um, I I seen I uh, got to read through the books. I'm still finishing. Like I said, it was a busy, so I've been moving yeah, yeah. through the state. I've been moving through a couple of states over the last couple of days. So I still have to finish it on both, but I was able to go through and um, get some of the, some highlights from to get a gist of um, you're very tall. <clears throat> so yeah, <laughs> you're six, six, uh, you're taller than me, which is, which is always weird for me. I'm, I'm about six, three. So it's yeah. always weird for me to see somebody taller than me and make me feel short. Um, no, I like, feel you. Guess, yeah, no, sorry. Go ahead. No, please. go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Actually, not too long ago, I actually saw a Korean in Seoul who was taller than me. Really? <laughs> yeah, that was very surprising. Um, I was going to say, I, I was going to ask you, did you play any sports? No, nah, I never was a sports person. Like, I got pushed into it. My parents made me do it, but I didn't like it. Yeah, I was going to say, like, for you to be um in South Carolina, that's a, a sports 
cap, but almost like it's a you know, they yeah. say it's a Bible belt. Well, it's almost like yeah. a sports Bible belt to an extent. For you to be as tall, I would be surprised. Yeah, um, basically, I, yeah, I guess you say I was more different. Like, I'm uh, not a sports person, not a religious person either. So, yeah, I pretty much just defied all the norms for black culture and especially in the Bible belt. Yeah, I had talked about this, um, a couple episodes ago when um i was i don't know if you uh watch abbott elementary <clears throat> mm-hmm. and i feel like you know i know you called yourself a blurred and yeah. i noticed that uh a lot of times in black culture when if we're not playing sports if we're not rapping if we're not doing what's traditionally normal you know yeah. we kind of push that away and call it insults you know and mm-hmm. I, I i had said this because um i was talking mainly about I said, uh, and I, I said in one episode that about, um, I said in one episode about interracial dating, I said, I didn't agree with it to an extent, mm-hmm. but then I said, but I can't, you have to also accept the fact that when you get somebody like Lawrence from insecure, I don't know if you've seen that or Abbott elementary and there yeah. with somebody of different races. Well, they're still doing shows to highlight our culture, but you called them weird when yeah. they were younger and yeah. now that you see them being exactly who they are and you get older, you're no longer worried about um, the social norms of fitting yeah. in in high school. Yeah, yeah. And they're still promoting our culture like you're doing with teaching. Like you went to Korea to teach other people that look like you how to get yeah. around. Um, you spent so much time alienating them young um, because they just didn't want to do what you wanted to do when yeah. you, and you made them feel like maybe less of themselves. So I noticed when you said you were six, six, you were trying to push into something because that was the norm. But in reality, mm-hmm. they, I feel like, you know, you could have still got highlighted for what you did. And, and now it's more normal to see black people traveling and doing yeah. what you do and doing what you didn't see. And because of what you did you created a lane to help people explore places like Korea and right. if you would have given up on that or if you would have followed what they did you would have not been able to do that so I commend you for not giving in to what you know the norms of not l- allowing people to kind of push you off your path just by labeling what they want because now as you got older you didn't have to find yourself you were always you so I commend that like right. I said um what you found, you were always normal to you. It's not what people deem, and you never had a change up. You didn't have to go through identity crisis, and I find that's probably really problematic with our culture. Is yeah. that we spend so much time um, berating and trying to fit in when we should just appreciate the different. So, yeah, um, uh, uh, true. In some cases, like I me, mean, I did go through identity crisis, especially when it came to religion. Uh, you know, I hate to get off track with though, but like, you know, me, I always question religion, particularly Christianity, is like. Wait, why am I going? Why am I going to church? Why am I supposed to believe in God? Like now, some of it was you know your typical teenage rebellion, like oh I'm too edgy, too cool for church, you know what I'm saying? But as I got older, it's like you know what? Nah, I don't believe in any of this. This is this ain't for me. Is this it was one of those moments like when you know age comes with wisdom? Like you when you get older, it's like you know what? I'm cool with who I am. Like I, it's okay to be different. It's okay to say you know this ain't for me. Well, people, well I have problems with family members who. Don't like the idea. I don't. I'm not a Christian. I don't believe in Bible. Absolutely, but hey, at least I'm living my truth. At least I'm being honest. Versus like people who just joining, who just basically I hate to say, but bandwagon when it comes to religion. People so much join bandwagon because oh, that's what you're supposed to do because of the culture you grew up in. And I think that I think that that's what gets lost is um, if you were to ask them five to ten years later in life. Why were you doing this? They say it's because this is what I was told. But did you challenge it? And I respect that because you figured like this is not me. I don't align to this. Like yeah. I'm in the sports. I play sports heavy. But if you look behind yeah. me, it's Marvel here. If I turn my computer a little bit this way, I also got yeah. a whole bunch of stuff that way. So it's like, yeah. and then I got sports right to the left of me. So I think the older I got, I just was like, um, I like the nostalgic parts about me, all that. Hey Arnold, mm-hmm. everything, and I like sports about me. And I think I said I got to a point to where, like, hell, if I was to pull this up, I still got my my Ranger blaster. You know what mm-hmm. I said? I felt like it was a part of me that made me me. And I think that um, when I got about 24, 23, 24, I mm-hmm. think I asked myself, who the fuck am I trying to impress? And yeah, I, exactly. think I, I think I 
I think I envy people that figured it out early. <clears throat> and I think I am disappointed in myself that I laughed at that, you know? Right. Now, I have some people that do weird shit, like we all know, that I'm not envious that I... Because some people that just do, like, outlandishly, like, you know, weird stuff. And I'm not talking about those people. I'm, I'm talking about people that, like, as I get older and I secretly liked it and I just didn't say it because it was that. So, yeah. um, so um, you went to college. Uh, where did you go to college at? Uh, first, when I finished high school, uh, I went straight to Charleston State University for a year, but my appendix burst and my grades suffered because uh, I missed, you know, so many classes, you know, recovering. Uh, then I kind of like, you know, as a kid, like, you know, when you drop out of school, you try to figure out, okay, what do I do with my life? You know, like, like what am I supposed to do? So I was kind of between, you know, working and then going military, trying to join the military, but my ASAP score wasn't high enough for the Air Force. So I said, you know, screw it. I'm going to go back to community college. So I did that for a few, for a couple of months, you know, for about a semester or two. And then I transferred over to Winthrop University. So um, when you said you, when you went to go to uh, teach ESL uh, abroad, mm -hmm. um, what made you pick Korea? Um, actually, I actually saw it on my uh, university's job board at the time while I was a like, senior in, in university, you know, trying to find a job, going to job fairs, but just couldn't find anything. And then I saw an ad about the idea of teaching English in Korea. Um, and I thought, okay, well, maybe let's look more into this too. And I figured, okay, this could be a good way to save some money, uh, pay off my student loan debt. Still haven't done that, by the way. But, <laughs> but um, and also, I also didn't follow my niche because I was wanting to travel and see the world. Like, I was wanting to go to Japan, too, but I didn't know how to do it. Because, you know, growing up, and I'm pretty sure you probably agree when I say this, uh, I never heard or seen other black people traveling or living abroad. If they did, it was because they were in the military, almost always. I know... Um... I was fortunate. I you're absolutely right. I was fortunate enough to travel only because my dad worked at General Motors. And yeah. so but when he took us traveling, it wasn't the experience that you're talking about. It was just to say he could take us somewhere traveling and it mm -hmm. was places that we shouldn't have been going, like Vegas or places and we were in the hotel all day where he was yeah. going where just to say he took us. But you're right, like um not a, none of my friends had been to places I had been at an early age, but I wasn't doing anything in those places. So you're right. Like it, um, it's not something we can do. It's not some family leisurely trips. Um, I did wonder why you didn't go to Japan. Cause you, once I was yeah. reading, like you said, you went to the Pokemon convention. Um, so yeah, I went, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I was comparing the countries teaching ESL between China, Korea, and Japan, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Japan is actually more expensive overall before compared to Korea. Mm -hmm. Joe, Japan and, is expensive as fuck. People think it's cheaper over yeah. there. It's not. No, nah, it's not. It's not. Even I, that's why I still haven't gone to Japan yet because it's Taiwan is more cheaper than Japan, basically. Let's put it that way. Yeah. So, um, um, go ahead. Just like Singapore, too. Like, I also want to check out Singapore, but that's a very expensive country, too. I know. Um, I, so I got stationed in Yakuska. Mm. Um, so I, I, I know a little bit um, of what you're talking about, like the expenses over there. And, um, is definitely something that you only kind of see a lot of military people. I did not see too many travelers come through. And if they were traveling to visit, they were visiting family. Um, so let's dive into uh, your book. So let's go into mm -hmm. um, what made you want to give. I know you talked a little bit about it because you don't see too many people traveling. But what made you want to give these books about write these uh, travelers books about how to travel in uh, South Korea? Well, uh, one, it was basically like May 2020. It came up with the idea of it because I looked around and I saw, uh, I did see travel books done for like, you know, for, for general population for everybody. Uh, so travel guys for women, so travel guys for men, which is great. They can be useful for those markets, right? But I thought, okay, what about black people? Because we're just for, for particularly African Americans and of course other black people from around the world. But African Americans are pretty new to traveling around the world. And no one's really done something like that before. So I figured, why not give it a shot since I was stuck at home? I figured, why not? I got nothing else to do. And so I figured, and I thought, like I said, I talked, like I said, I talked about it in the book before, but why is it called Black Travel Only? Anybody's welcome to read it, of course. But the reason I did uh, focus on Black, particularly people of African descent, is because uh, when it comes to like traveling in Asia, uh, all foreigners get stared at, but Black people, those with darker complexion, will get more stares. And especially with me, like I'm six seven, dark skinned black man, and I get stared at all the damn time. I have a funny story. Yeah. 
Oh, go and ahead. I, and, yeah. and I want I emphasize in the book. I want to tell people that it's not because it's not don't don't because some people I've heard of black child group saying like, that it makes you feel like an animal. You're not an animal. Remember, uh, going to many places in Asia, like every, like the populations, the pre homogenous, like everybody looks the same up and down, looks right wherever you go. So, so don't feel scared or intimidated if people start looking at you. It's mostly at curiosity, more almost always it's always that curiosity. Yeah. So, um, I had a funny story when I was reading that in there. You said you were at a Pokemon convention. So, um, in Japan yeah. when I was there, uh, I basically was like the tallest person there. Um, I'm about six yeah. three. So, um, when I was on the train, the first probably the first month I was there. Uh, I had a pair of Jordans on my feet, taxis, and one of the guys came up there and he pointed to my feet. And so it's obvious to tell in Japan who's the foreigners. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I was I'm above average height. So and I have a beard on. Yeah. And, you know, I have like an athletic build, more of a football player than I am a basketball player or well, because of my height. I still can be considered a basketball player's height because I'm still uh, uh, way tall. So they think because I see Jordans on my feet, they say basketball. So the guy walks me around and helps me out because I got lost. And then um, I know you know this. Black people just wear hats. They don't have to be their favorite yeah. team. It don't have to be anything. It's just they wear hats. Yeah. Uh, one guy saw me with a Cincinnati Reds hat on, and he thought I was a baseball player. I thought he was mugging me at first. Yeah. Um, but he just wanted an autograph. They bought a jersey. <laughs> it's helped me out. Um, a lot of the times they just look at you if you're black and just think that you are an athlete because at, at least in the military, because I have my beard. So a yeah. lot of times, you know, it's clean cut. So I've gotten a lot, the impression of that I was an athlete. So <clears throat> I have uh, I can understand completely where you're coming from, especially being how tall you are. Um, yeah, it was probably weird for seeing you at a Pokemon convention. But uh, I know they were thinking like, "Ooh, man!" Um, they yeah, I've been, to couple, I've been to a couple. I've been to a couple tournaments, the Pokemon Smash Bros. tournaments hosted by Nintendo Korea, and uh, according to some of the players, they were intimidated. They, they're scared by me. They're intimidated by me uh, because of my height, and my stature. But uh, of course, they the their nerves calm down when they when I, I lost to them. Of course, but yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. This ain't this ain't that type of black. This ain't this one. Okay, cool. This ain't the Michael Jordan of blacks. Cool. We nah, can nah. calm down. No, no, no. But uh but it's, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, go ahead, please. I was gonna say, is Dragon Ball Fighter Z really big over there? Um like, I would think so. Really in terms of fighting games. Uh obviously Tekken is a bit was also the big one, Street Fighter, uh Guilty Gear, I think Grand Blue versus um uh, and Smash Bros. That's still new to South Korea as a whole. Really, man, they yeah, love it. There's, over there. there's never. I've been here since 2016. There was never a Smash Bros. scene in South Korea at all. There's no Smash Bros. tournaments, unless you went to a unless you had a friend in the military who had a Wii U for Smash Four. Like you, it was pretty bone dry. But when the Switch came out and Smash Bros. Ultimate came out, that's when it started to started to grow, like explode, and it's still growing to this day. Uh, actually, I did host for a while. Uh, pre-COVID, pre-pandemic, I also hosted a Smash Bros. tournament over in Daegu for a while, but um, after I moved to start a new job, I wasn't able to continue doing that. So now the main ones are in Seoul. Gotcha. So what are some of the misconceptions people may have about uh, South Korea? Uh, one that I know some and I hate when other forums post about it online is like, South Korea is so safe that you can leave your stuff on the ground and no one's going to steal it. Uh, well, that is true to some extent. Like, deaths does happen. Like, there's also a lot of crimes, just like back home that occur, but you just don't hear about it on the Korean English news sites. Um, also, another fact that, you know, uh, Korea is just this wonderful place. Like, any country has a flaw. So, for example, uh, South Korea, wait, I'm not sure if you can mention this, but uh, South Korea has the most high, the highest rate of unliving themselves in the world. What and I have the highest rate of what? Uh, I'm live, big suicide. I wasn't sure if I could say the word suicide on the platform. Oh, you can say suicide. Okay, I, I didn't know. I didn't know. Uh, yeah, so South Korea has one of the highest suicide rates in the world because of the pressure to be have top grades, go to top university, go to work at certain companies. Isn't that where that yeah. Jake Paul guy had? Yeah. The, don't they have like a suicide force or something like that there? No, that was Japan. That was Japan. Oh, okay. 
Well, there, unfortunately, there's a suicide bridge. I hate to say it, over in Seoul. Um, and of course, it really sucks if you're LGBT, if you're Korean and LGBT. Like that's really that's one. Now, uh, South Korea has no anti-discrimination law, so Koreans and sometimes foreigners, you can be fired if you're gay. How is it for um, interracial relationships over there? Um, it depends on what where you're from. Obviously, uh, if you're a white girl, obviously you're gonna be the prize. Uh, is dating is possible in Korea? Uh, also depending on the cities, but uh, from what I've gathered, like especially for black men looking to date Korean women, it's possible. But just like in America, uh, when it comes to summer white girls, Korean girls will date you, but they won't bring you home to meet mom and dad. How has it um, how has it been as far as uh? like the treatment it's like because i know do you remember um when the outbreak well, mm. something recently just happened i think no i think that was probably with the ukraine but how was it like with the treatment of black people i know you said like when they look at you they don't like treat you bad but how do they kind of treat you versus like white people uh i would say if there's rac racism it's mostly because of ignorance because they really just don't know and also colorism because for those who know, so, so in many East Asia, China, Korea, Japan, uh, East Asian cultures, colorism is pretty rampant uh, against people of darker skin tone, especially against South Asians. And keep in mind, colorism has been around in many in Korea, Japan, China for centuries, even long before the colonizers came through. Like colorism has always been the appearance of having lighter skin is considered more beautiful. You consider more wealthy. And that that part of culture it's, it's been around for centuries. That hence why you probably hear about uh, lightening whitening creams, you know, bleaching creams, you know, being more whiter. And why you see, especially in, in Asia, like why you see so many women having parasols to protect them from the sun, which is fine, of course, but it's because they don't want to get uh, a darker tone. Is there a lot of like Blasian um, babies there, like there is in Japan? Mm, probably, but. Uh, yeah, it's been possible. Um, but yeah, so it's possible. It can happen. So from the, the book, um, as a black person going through South Korea, mm -hmm. like what are you um, helping them maneuver through, like through all the stuff that you kind of said here? Like what kind of experience are you going to kind of give them from hearing all this stuff that you just kind of told me? What what are you going to kind of keep them avoided from and keep them from experience? Well, uh, honestly, this book is more to disguise to basically uh, – to paraphrase Hugh Freeman from the Boondocks, we're trying to help avoid a nigga moment, basically. That's what the book's for. Okay. Uh, but I uh, chuckle aside, of course, but also because uh, it helps them feel comfortable because obviously for some Af African American particularly, it's going to be their first time traveling so far away because most black folk, they have to go to like South America, Dominican Republican, or Africa, which is fine. Hey, go do where you want to go to, of course. But if it's your first time, say, to Asia, especially going from places like South America or Africa where, you know, being having an art complex is fine. Whereas a place in Asia, that's not normal. That's not the norm, technically, culturally. So uh, these books, uh, it's more to help you feel comfortable with it, help you learn what to expect. And yeah, so that's, uh, of course, it's like your typical travel guide. You look at locations you can go visit, places you can try to go and get some eat at. But mostly it's to just kind of uh, help you get, feel comfortable to be with traveling in South Korea. So uh, give me your top three locations, your top uh, three foods, and your top three, hmm. I want to say, I don't know if I call them excursions or, mm -hmm. we'll go with locations, because I, I don't know what I would lump in, like. Yeah, like, like uh, Tom City, Tom sure. Ooh. Uh, or cities. Let's go cities. So locations, yeah. city, like locations as as far as cities, um, uh, places like as far as like like a um, what is it called? Like a gift store or like a, yeah. a figure store or comic store or anime store yeah. like that. And then your top three like foods. Okay, uh, location city wise, I'm going with. Oh, it was a good one. Um, I'm gonna go Guangzhou on the west coast. Um, uh, Gyeongju and Daegu. Okay, what kind of food do they uh, sell those? 
Uh, honestly, uh, Jim Doc is one of my favorite foods for sure. Uh, the Galbi, uh, and one of my favorite street foods for sure is hot dog, which is like a fried pancake dough with nuts and seeds, cinnamon, brown sugar sometimes. Uh, and in terms of shops, um, I guess one of them is the Pokemon pop up store that happens from time to time. Uh, I'm actually, depending on the weather this weekend, I'm actually might go to Seoul to buy some more Pokemon dolls for the classroom, for my classroom. Uh, um, shopping, I guess, I also guess Costco in Korea. I miss going to that from time, sometimes. Um, and yeah, that's about it. I really don't really do clothes shopping in Korea. Oh, um, what's that, um, uh, what's that market? Electronic market, Kyochi, Kyochi market? In Seoul, there's a QG Electronic Center in Seoul. Uh, do you um? How many students do you have in your ESL class? Uh, depends on the. Now I'm in public school. Uh, I don't teach at a Hogwarts for private at school academies. So now for my school classroom, it varies. Uh, my fourth grade class, I'll have about in total about sixty students. Uh, from a fifth grade class, sixth grade, I got about fifty-eight, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, what? but um, fifth grade class, sixth grade class, I got two, one, six, one, six, two. It does like 20, 29 each. Gotcha. What would you say is the best time for a traveler to come down to uh, Korea, South Korea? Uh, between, I would say definitely between uh, around early April, if you can catch the cherry blossom season, it'd be time to write, depending on the location, of course. Uh, definitely between. Uh, May, early June, when it's almost all sunny and clear skies most of the time. Uh, summertime, July, I would say July for a certain time because the uh, Daegu Chimic Festival, which, which actually came back this year, uh, was a fried chicken and beer festival. Mm. Do they have and October that, Fest there? Yes, they do, in this town called Namhae, but that's more in south or south, southwest area of Korea. Gotcha. That's a little too, I would love to go to there, but that's way too far for me. To okay. get there and back, they had one in Japan, so I didn't know if they had yeah. one there. Yeah, yeah, they do. Um, definitely, also July and August can be brutal because of the humidity. Oh yeah, and that's oh, why yeah. you talk. Yeah, the humidity is brutal. Like I'll put it this way: um, I was in Mopo and Guangzhou for research for my next book. Right, literally after about thirty minutes, my to an hour later, like my shirt was sweating. It was I was sweating hard, especially when you go hiking in Korea. So, they, hmm? no, I was gonna say, do they have any like special, like you know, uh, Japan had Mount Fuji, they had like the temples and stuff. Do they have any like special, like uh, mounds or special temples or anything like that? You would oh, yeah, about? they got tons of good temples you can find, have a good time at, too, respectfully, of course. Um, mm -hmm. and of course, mountains too. Like, Korea is a very mountainous country, everywhere you look, there's a mountain, you're on a hill or a mountain. Uh, many cities, like some parts of Busan, some parts in Seoul, they're built on a mountain. And you said um, if they're coming out to Korea, they you said somebody should probably have about fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah, I would say about right for a week at least. Uh, fifteen hundred. Yeah, about fifteen hundred. Do they use yen out there? No, they use the Korean won. They have their own oh, currency. Gotcha. Uh, the, usually, uh, the dollar will be stronger with the Korean won, so you be able to get a little bit extra off it okay. in terms of change rate. Uh, don't and I mentioned this before, but don't exchange all your money at the bank. Uh, you can you can get some money out where you at the airport, of course, but go to the bank the next business day if you can, and that's where you get more of a better rate. Got you. And so the Dagu manuscript, did I say it right? The Dagu, 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 Dagu manuscript. Yeah. Go ahead and give us some insight in that one. Unless your second book. Um, yeah, yeah. Go ahead and give us some insight on what that one is um, about. Uh, that one, same thing, but more better, I guess you can say, like, it's, it's like your step two. Um, so I wanted to do, I wanted to talk about more one of my favorite cities I used to live in and, uh, one that never gets talked about as much in terms of travel. Cause everybody, when people think of Korea, they have to think of Seoul or Busan, maybe Jeju Island, but no love for Daegu or Incheon. So I figured, um, and for me, I wanted to, I could have done easily done a book about Seoul or Busan, but I wanted to start small, see, like, kind of like test the waters. If it doesn't make for type of, this type of content, so I figured, let me try at least these two books, these two seeds first, 
and if people enjoy what they like, then of course I can always add soul and boost on me later on. What made um Inchon? Am I saying it right, Inchon? Yeah, Inchon. Yeah. What made that like your favorite place? What made that so good? Um. Well, it's not because it's not soul. Uh, that's for me. I never want to live in soul. Uh, it's close enough to soul. Uh, that's some good stuff. Uh, especially like Inchon Grand Park. The park was very beautiful too. Um. And it was a little bit more cheaper, too. I figured at the time, I was living there when I wrote the first book. So I figured, why not just start here? I live here. So it's easier for me to get around. Is it um, is the housing and stuff there? Like, are they small? Uh, most Koreans live in apartments. Gotcha. So, uh, because the land is small and mountainous. So it is possible. You can build a house, but you got, um, obviously, that's easy to do in the rural areas and it's in the city. So have you seen like the house or the apartments or stuff? And have you seen like the the living in Japan? It's yeah. very small. Is it kind of similar yeah. there? In a sense, yes. Um, again, um, obviously you might get a little bit more space or two with apartments, but um, again, it's mostly on the vertical side of things. But again, uh, because Korea is so small, space wise, it's kind of small in terms of land availability. So uh, housing. Uh, if you're looking to get your own place, it's possible. Now, some the problem, the struggles of uh, getting a housing in Korea just to do apartments because they have this renting system called Chosen. So basically, like for example, uh, a deposit, average deposit for one person, right? We'll say about what, two thousand dollars in U.S., right? Uh, for a deposit in Korea, it could be for um, four, five to ten thousand dollars. So, it's, almost, it's almost like you got to get a loan to get a, a house a deposit. But usually the more if you pay more into the deposit, the less you pay in expenses and bills usually. Can you speak fluent Korean? No, I'm, uh, I'm actually in the process of studying right now. How often do you come back to the States? Uh, I haven't. Look, last time I came back was back in February 2019. Oh, man. Okay. Yeah. You so I still haven't left Korea yet because of the pandemic. Mm, do you plan on coming back anytime soon? Eventually, uh, honestly, I would as much as I would love to travel to other countries right now. Uh, honestly, I just don't see this. Yeah, I really don't feel like it's worth the process of um, going getting tested, quarantining, and then coming back to testing, possible quarantine again. It's just for me, it's just not worth the hassle. Do you feel like now at this point, do you plan on coming back to the states or is Korea like home? Uh, I'll come back to visit, but I don't plan on living back in USA ever again. Got you, got you. Um, hey, I, have, I have affordable health care. Why well, will come back to that? I understand. Maybe Canada or something like that? Or... Yeah, no, anywhere else. Yeah, basically, I can go anywhere else. Um, I think it's when, for me, this works for me. Uh, I'm already introverted as it is, so I don't need to be around family or anybody else all the time, you know? Got you. Yeah. Um, I know uh, one of the topics I was going to talk about, usually I do a segment. I don't know mm -hmm. how frequent you listen to the episodes, but... Um, I do a segment, you know, usually where I, like I have like maybe like my what I learned or therapeutic session <clears throat> and um, on the pre part of the one I have pre part of it, the episode I had learning to walk away from situations, whether it be an argument or whether it be in a relationship or whatever it is, just me personally. Um, <clears throat> I've looked at like walking away as quitting. And that could just be like if I'm having an argument with somebody, it's only an argument because to you, it could look like I'm just trying to keep it going on to win. But to me, I just want us to come to a point of resolution mm. and I just need to learn how to walk away, whether it's that debate or argument or whatever, or whether it's that entire situation or whether it's family in general. You get what I'm saying? And I can understand, yeah. you know, just what, you know, people causing you stress and stuff like if it's anything like that, you know, you just learn to like walk away for the betterment of what's good for you. Um, because to me, like I said, I, cause I play sports, I look at it as a loss. I don't like to lose. Mm -hmm. So if I try and it, it's not even like a loss, it's more, I quit and I don't like to quit. I don't ever want to quit. Cause that means I didn't give them all, but I have to look at it. I had, I had to tell myself, I have to look at it in a different light, you know, just kind of change my mindset up of you, you know, you're not quitting. You're just, choosing a different alternative you know what i'm saying but um i did want to switch it so i know you're an anime fan um what's your top five anime Ooh, let's see um 
trying to think of this one. Uh, I did enjoy One Piece, Naruto. Um, uh, what was the other the one? Trigun, growing up. Um, uh, what was it? Uh, Konosuba. And I believe... Oh, Attack on Titan. Okay, that's five. So let me see my top five of all time. Uh, Attack on Titan is up there. Attack on Titan is great. Um, Dragon Ball Z, surprised you didn't say that, kind of disrespectful. Yeah. Um, yeah. Dragon Ball Z, Naruto, um, Shaman King, throwback. Yeah. Uh, that's probably because that's like the first anime, it's probably like the first or second anime. I, don't, I think I watched that around the same time I watched. Um, Dragon Ball Z when I was a kid came on like Fox. I don't know if you ever watched it. They, they brought it back on Netflix. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Shaman King is really good to me. It's like one of my favorites. It's just more nostalgic. Uh, mm-hmm. And then see my fifth one. I'm at four. Naruto, Dragon Ball Z, um, Shaman King, Attack on Titans. And my fifth, because I don't watch them, I watch more of like like the Marvel and stuff movies, like the, the mm-hmm. action or the DC movies and stuff. But I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. I'm over here looking at it right now to see if I'm missing one. Because I don't want to make one of the new ones. I, I really like Demon Slayer. I like Demon Slayer a lot. Yeah. yeah I, like um, I like I like My Hero a lot. I like One Punch Man a lot. But I don't know if I would call him my all-time favorite. I like Inuyasha. I could mm-hmm. never get into One Piece. Um, and I feel like I'm missing something that I can't think of right now. I'm trying to think. It's probably some OGs that I can't think of right now that um I'll probably think of after. It's like when you come on record, you can never think of. Yeah, it. yeah. But um if I if I probably think of it, I'll probably just think of uh I probably think of it. I, I, I mind you, I don't watch Baruto because I just feel like how I got the most powerful person now. You done made him like a, a sub character for your son. Yeah. I don't care about that. But um I feel like you're in a great place for um I feel like you're in a great place for the people that want to be like you. You know what I'm saying? Like I feel like yeah. uh anywhere Asian people are people like that think outside the box. And I feel like people like you know you like to think outside the box. You like to think for people other than yourself. And I feel like Asian people from the stuff that they do, they think for people other than themselves. So I think you I think you're in an environment that you like. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, I'll put Pokemon up there because I, I really had a good time watching Pokemon. Because I was trying to think, Yu Gi Oh was really fire to me. Uh, Pokemon still got the best theme song ever. I don't care what nobody say. Uh, I could play that thing all day. Um, I'm really having a hard time. I'm trying to drag it on. And I don't know if you've noticed, so I can think of my yeah, fifth yeah. one. But I, I, really can't get, I can't get my fifth one up here. I don't know what it is, but yeah, that's all right. That's all right. But yeah, so uh. Huh. I almost put Gundam up there because I used to watch the old ones, but they didn't have the new ones yeah. on Netflix too. Um, I feel like they put something on. I feel like they put something on Netflix that I watch. I haven't watched Hunter X yet. Yeah, I love Hunter Hunter. I like that show. Hmm. I'll be better. <laughs> what got? Right. What plans? What plans you got for the rest of the year? Uh, right now, I'm actually writing my travel guide for South Korea, so I'm, right, I'm in the process of that right now. Uh, mm-hmm. I started working a little bit on the draft. I just got back from traveling to uh, Gwangju and Mokpo for research, so uh, right now I'm kind of taking a break, slash also writing about it. Um, so basically, right, that's what I'm working on. I'm probably going to continue to do a little bit more traveling to other places uh, during the breaks, the upcoming four-day, three-day weekends. So that's pretty much the plan right now. Um, do a little more travel, get more research done. And hopefully, I'm hoping to get this book done within the next year or two. How long before you uh, take the Blurred series outside of Korea? Is that one of your goals? Uh, uh, maybe I might do so. Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe just uh, depending on where I can travel, of course. Okay. Well, I'm really excited. Like I said, it's been really engaging um, reading it. Uh, I've been, I done got in trouble through, I was going through a TAPS class and I got in trouble because they kept asking me a question. I was trying to get through the chapters reading and I got to the, um, the Tabi part and I was like, man, this is really, and I was looking at the figure part and I was like, I wonder if they had 
knees here and knees. And they kept saying, um, Mr. Harrison, Mr. Harrison. I was like, oh, shit, that's me. So yeah. uh, I'm really excited for everything that you're getting to you right now. I'm really excited that you, you know, somewhere that you found peace. You're teaching people not only English, but you're also teaching people that I want to travel um, the easiest and best way possible. I'm, I'm loving that you're being able to be uniquely and authentically you in your own skin while also giving people a great experience in a country that people have a bad connotation on while shedding light and showing the beauty that it is. Um, I'm grateful that you have these books out here, a uh, black person out here making a way for us to have another avenue that is also, um, which we don't get highlighted enough at travel, traveling. Like you said, not only do we not do, uh, you don't see us traveling. We don't see us in the travel guide business. Yeah. So, um, let everybody know where they can find your books at. Yeah. yeah you can find the black Charles guide to Incha, Incha, I N C H E O N. And Black Travel's got to Daegu, Daegu, D A E G U. Uh, you can find it on my Amazon uh, right now as ebook format uh, right now. So uh, give them while they're, while they're available now because, or if you want to wait, uh, I'm actually going to take the books down and put them in my next book when I do the country of South Korea. So eventually, uh -huh. I'm, I mean, I'm actually going to add those two books and kind of put think of it as a kind of like an anthology. Of a sense. Oh, oh, I didn't know if you're done. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Also, uh, you guys, if you want to see more of my adventures, you can also um, follow me on Instagram or my TikTok. But that's starting to blow up even further. At the blurred B L E R D blurred explore one word. All right, and is it the same for your Instagram and TikTok? Are the same? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Instagram, TikTok, and our IDs are the same. Yes. Okay, you got a YouTube channel or anything? Uh, no, I think I'm just focused on TikTok since that has more chance to grow further than t YouTube or uh, Instagram. Oh, okay. Well, I appreciate the, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, I appreciate you giving the time to talk to us and letting us know everything that's going on. Hopefully when you finish the, the, the third and fourth book and everything, you come back on and we can shoot the shit again. Oh, and, definitely. Um, promote it some more and anything else that you need, just let me know. We can link back up again just to have some more stories. I'm going to find my fifth one and I'm going to let yeah, you know. Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. Take time with that. I appreciate it. You look hot. Um, yeah, I no, it's because of the community, man. So that's why it's just community over here in Korea. Like my room is getting hot. So yeah. So you know, like I said, I, I know, I know, I bring the pressure yeah. sometimes when people come. Nah, out. nah, you didn't, you didn't do it in Korea this time. You, you know, got you know, you know. So <laughs> nah, I nah, nah. We can never like just sweat, man. This community is cr crazy over here in the summer. But no, nah, I understand, man. But I appreciate you. Like I said, I appreciate you joining us. Uh, this has been another episode of the 8192 Podcast. We have the one and only Feel the Blurred Explorer getting us right with the <clears throat> Black Traveler's Guide to South Korea <clears throat> and the Dagu Manuscripts. They're both out on Amazon. Make sure y'all check it out and make sure y'all check out the Blurred Explorer. Those are his Instagram and his TikTok to see everything happening for all of our African-American and melanated people that want to go figure out what is popping out there in South Korea. And y'all make sure y'all check us out at the 8192 Podcast, where we always keep on 100, y'all. And we're going to check y'all out later. So, peace. Back in this bitch, uh. Know we full attack in this shit, uh. You know the full Mac came equipped, uh.